How's it going, everyone? It's Chad here from Loo Tunes, and uh, how's it going to you, Gretel? Happy Disney Month. Say, do we have any uh, new packages or letters in our viewer mailbox? No, Chad. Still empty. Just like it's always been. <sighs> <sighs> well, that's okay, Gretel, because uh, we got a countdown to do. Well, Disney Month is about to come to an end, but we've still got one countdown to get through. And guess what? You voted on it. Me? No, no, Gretel, not you. Uh, the Facebook page, actually. So if you're still not over there on the Facebook page, well, you really should be because you're missing out on votes such as this one. What a subtle plug. <laughs> So I asked people on the page what countdown they wanted to see most for Disney Month, and the resounding answer was my top 10 favorite Disney princes. So let's have a cheers and get right to it. Oh, but one thing first. For my list, the character doesn't necessarily have to be a prince. Consider that Disney themselves considers people Disney princes who certainly weren't actual princes. But by and large, if they have some sort of royalty aspect to them, be it by birth or acquired some other way, I'm considering them fair game. Also, I'm positive we all have our own, and this is a list of my favorites, be it because they were funny, badass, interesting, memorable, or all of the above. So, let's do it. Trolls are fine to pass the time, Nathaniel, but but my heart longs to be joined in song. I've been dreaming of a true love's kiss. Starting off the countdown is the essential parody of the Disney Prince, Prince Edward from Enchanted. Watch this guy for just a minute or two, and you'll start to get a grasp of just what being an early Disney Prince was all about. Edward, much like Giselle, has been confined to his quaint Disney life, fighting trolls, singing songs, and uh, just reveling in his own general awesomeness. Oh, you shall not prevail, foul troll! That maiden is mine! And yet, still a nice guy to a fault, and optimistic beyond all belief. But watching this over-the-top character function in the real world is a riot, and James Marston goes nuts with this role. He completely goes ham and delivers some of the biggest laughs in the movie. I never would have thought of him for this role, but damn, who would have thought Cyclops could sing like that? Oh. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't rip you apart. Oh, Simba, you must understand. The pressures of ruling a kingdom are no longer yours. Step down, Scar. Ah yes, the Lion King, and at one point, the Lion Prince? Simba Taylor Thomas doesn't become quite as likable for me until he becomes Simba Broderick Bloom Bueller. Bueller? We don't spend too much time with older Simba, but the grown-up version once he decides to help feels like Mufasa's noble son. And by the time we meet him, we're totally ready for a Kill Bill-style revenge rampage. Of course, not quite possible for Disney, but uh, I'm pretty proud of what Simba did with his return to Pride Rock. Simba wins. Fatality. A girl rescued me. She, she was singing she had the most beautiful voice uh eric i think you swallowed a bit too much seawater off we go as far as i know eric is considered by most to be the dreamiest of the disney princes disney's tuxedo mask if you will <sighs> So I hope to avoid a mob of angry, pitchfork-wielding fangirls outside my house due to putting him this high on the list. But for me, there's just a few princes that I like more. But Eric, he's a likable guy. 
honorable, and his determination to be with Ariel is admirable. It's a shame, too, that he didn't get to sing more. He has some outstanding numbers in the Broadway version of The Little Mermaid that are certainly worth checking out. But if we're being honest, there's one thing that we all know that Eric did that brings him onto this list. And I thought it would be best delivered in something I call Poor Unfortunate Souls Reprise, also known as Poor Unfortunate Bitch. <clears throat> That poor unfortunate bitch Impaled by a ship If you are a Disney villain You're just asking for a killing So farewell to the sea witch <laughs> Booyah! Welcome to Cusco-topia My ultimate summer getaway Complete with water slide What? Isn't it great? It's my birthday gift to me <laughs> I'm so happy. I must admit, I'm not a big fan of the Emperor's New Groove. However, with Cusco's royal lineage, there's just no way I'm leaving him off of this list. He's vain, he's shallow, he's a downright asshole, which is really the whole premise of the movie. Yeah, Cusco turns into a llama and learns through his struggles to be a better guy, but my real reason for this spot is his personality earlier on, which is largely a result of a seriously crucial performance from David Spade. Yikes, 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 and let me guess, you have a great personality. David Spade is one of those casting choices that the role just won't work without. The role sort of becomes defined by the actor, and anyone playing the role in the future is simply attempting an impression at David Spade. In The Emperor's New Groove, though, the villains are just so dang likable that Cusco almost gets lost as the protagonist. But to have a royal Disney character behave like such an asshole and remain funny and likable? Well, I just don't think we'll be seeing another character like this for uh, quite some time. No! You threw off my groove! I'm sorry, but you've thrown off the Emperor's groove. Sorry! I'll use that fat fryer as bait to trap Robin Hood. Another trap? Yes, yes, you stupid serpent. Now wait just a dang gosh darn minute. A Disney prince list can't have villains on it. Well, it does. It's true, villains are fair game. And Prince John is one of my childhood favorites. Robin Hood is the first Disney movie and one of the first animated things that I've ever seen. And it's always had sort of a special place in my heart, if I can uh, be any more cheesy. Extra cheese, please. <laughs> And this particular character is burned into my mind, so I cannot pass up the opportunity to put him on the list. The cowardly thumb-sucking, the whining, and the obsession with taxes. Taxes! <laughs> taxes! Beautiful, lovely taxes! <laughs> I think he's been watching a bit too much DuckTales. <laughs> Prince John is not by any stretch of the noggin cool or awesome but how pathetic he is makes him seriously detestable and an effective villain. Oh, the richest plum of them all, nothing. <laughs> Ham. Can't meet your future bride looking like that. But I have met her father. Yeah, you have? Where? Once upon a dream. Uh, oh. uh, Philip, uh, stop it, stop uh, that. Uh, uh, Philip. If you've seen my top 10 swords list, then you know I hold Prince Philip in quite high regard, especially in comparison to his two contemporaries from the original three Disney princes. Philip is a dedicated and battle-tested prince. These two are boring. He's definitely representing the traditional style prince on this list. Philip is your standard handsome prince charming type. What's more, he goes straight up legend mode when fighting Maleficent. And sure, he may have kissed a passed out person, but plenty of Disney characters have. Yeah. 
This is more awkward than that time I tried to sing the last word of a girl worth fighting for. A girl worth fighting for! We were all singing, so I... I've... <laughs> it's... To make a prince. Now, is that an official wish? Say the magic words. Genie! I wish for you to make me a prince. All right! Yo, yo, woo, 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 first! Prince Ali Abubu, also known as Aladdin. He was just a simple poor boy, or a... Worthless street rat. Jeez, if I was that rich, I could afford some manners. <laughs> Initially, Aladdin becomes Prince a bit differently than the others, of course using his genie wish to make him into a prince. So Aladdin might have been a thief, but he's got that Disney heart of gold. Thanks in some small part to DJ's boyfriend on Full House. My mom's making meatloaf tonight. Of course, we all love the scene where he shares his hard-earned stolen loaf of bread with some hungry kids. But speaking of this scene, it becomes truly incredible when played backwards. Hey guys, my name's Aladdin, and I think I'm probably more hungry than you, so okay. I'm just gonna grab this and go over here and eat. <sighs> Kids, what a bunch of goofballs. Uh... Oh, uh, Prince Hans of the Southern Isles. Uh, Princess Anna of Arendelle. Princess? My lady. Oh. Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> Come on. The instant you saw Prince John on this list, you knew Hans was gonna show up. Well, if you watched my Disney Moments video, that is. If not, simply put, Hans was the one that I rooted for to end up with Anna over Kristoff. And I just thought he was a much cooler character. I mean, check out these combat skills. But while we're here, I'd like to speak about why it's completely reasonable for any audience member to root for Hans. Some may say it has to do with crucial and narrative-breaking flaws in the story. For instance, when Hans is knocked into the water, he looks up and smiles charmingly, despite the fact that Anna has already gone. If he knew he was alone, shouldn't he flail around in the water and say something like, Damn it, this better be worth it! It really makes no sense. That'd be like Jafar going down into his secret dungeon and being like, Aladdin is such a funny lad. And that Sultan, ha! Huh. What a sweetheart. Also consider, love is an open door. It's a duet that, upon finishing, left us in the theater thinking, that was a great duet, a classic Disney feel with a modern, quirky twist. The duet, when watched a second time, feels like a very manipulative course of actions, and there's a few slight hints of manipulation within the song. One that I'll highlight is, I mean, it's crazy, what? we finish each other's sandwiches. That's what I was going to say. I've never was that what you were going to say, Hans? Or were you just going to say, that's what I was going to say, to whatever Anna said? We finish each other's Dunkaroos. That's what I was going to say. Man, I miss Dunkaroos. So if you choose to read into it enough, you might believe that Hans is just a very, very convincing actor, and his genuine seeming compassion is all carefully planned. Or you might just say it's bad writing. I choose the former. I find Hans to be one of the most unique and one of my personal favorite Disney villains of all time that not only betrayed Anna, but audience members like me who were rooting for him. If only there was someone out there who loved you. The castle is your home now, so you can go anywhere you like. Except the West Wing. What's in the West Wing? It's forbidden! You'll see that I've used the title Prince Adam, but... I won't lie, once the Beast goes from the Beast to Prince Adam, he kind of becomes a little less cool. So let's rewind back to when he was the Beast. He's brash and unreasonable and still hasn't really learned his lesson yet, but he's still compassionate and has a heart of gold. 
and he has some great romantic moments. This scene in particular is probably my favorite romantic Disney scene of all time. All of the foreshadowing we had about Belle and how much she loves to read makes you feel like this for her would be like freaking Chucky Jesus. But you can never forget that the Beast is ready at all times to go full monster mode to defend the things he cares about. Oh, and this. Wow, you didn't miss a shot, Gaston. <laughs> You're the greatest hunter in the whole world. I know. <laughs> no beast alive stands a chance against you. <laughs> yeah, I guess there was a beast alive who stood a chance against you. Turns out he was living right on the outskirts of your very own village. And though a lot of people disagree with me about his human form looking kind of cracked out, I've got to stick to my guns on this one. This guy looks full on crazy. I think he's quite handsome. Oh, okay. Gretel, it sounds like you have a little crush on Prince Adam. No. Just admit it. Just admit it. No. Yes, you do. Please stop that. Gretel and Adam sitting in a tree. K-I-S-S-I- -S What you've all been waiting for. Now help us up, pretty boy. Sorry. My hands are full. Push. It's Eugene Fitzherbert if you want to use his real name, but Flynn Rider is such a better name. Sure, all of these princes have their redeeming qualities, but Flynn Rider is just too damn cool. I must confess that I'm a huge fan of Chuck, so I was basically already sold on this guy before I even saw it. But I have to say, he turned out even better than I expected. He's the Han Solo of the Disney universe. Well, I, I guess Han Solo is, is the Han Solo. You know what I mean. No. And Mandy Moore, I feel, plays an outstanding princess opposite Zachary Levi, both in acting and singing. Ryder isn't just a standard rogue type either. Turned out he was just a wannabe named Eugene, and he chose his own destiny as the dashing outlaw Flynn Ryder. Though they could never get his nose right. They just can't get my nose right. Oh, and I just love Zachary Levi's narration bits. He brings conviction when it needs to be serious, and humor when it calls for some levity. And he even sneaks in a blackout drinking joke at the end of the film. The party lasted an entire week, and honestly, I don't remember most of it. Flynn Rider is the lovable rogue that's been missing from the Disney princes. He brings a great mix of charm, humor, and swashbuckling adventurousness. Oh yeah, and this. Here comes the smolder. With that, we conclude Disney Month. It went by so fast, and uh, I had such a fun time doing it. Hopefully you guys had fun with me. I'm already thinking about next year's Disney Month. So thank you everybody so much for watching. I really do appreciate- You've got your very first viewer mail. Oh cool, no way! Oh man, this is awesome. It's from Konoha Kitten. Dear Chad, here is a very lifelike and realistic portrait of you. So sweet. It's good, but is it really accurate? It's, it's hard to say it. I mean, really think about it. Because, I don't know. Okay, thanks, bye. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, you're still here. I hope that you would be. If you want to keep up with me and all the cartoon type content that I'm working on, be sure to visit me on Facebook at facebook.com slash lootoons. I'm posting tons of fun pictures and updates and even countdowns that can only be seen on the Facebook page, not to mention exclusive voting opportunities like the one for this list that you will miss out on. 
Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter for much more frequent updates about the channel. At Lootoons is where you can find me. So, I hope to see you guys out there on the internet. And uh, thank you for watching. Thank you.